All right, so what we're doing here today is Algebra 1, Review 1 through 25. We'll call this Part 1. Okay, we'll see how much of it we get through today. Obviously, we can tell that we didn't do super duper on this. All right, let's take a look at some of these questions. Of course, we don't need to see that. Okay, um, with this first question, I'll see. I don't know if it'll let me write on it or not. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, so right off the bat, we're dealing with order of operations. And it looks like it just repeats question one twice. Okay, so if you, I don't know why either. But uh, where we want to start here is order of operations. So grouping symbols or parentheses. All right. So we've got a set of parentheses over here on the right, or brackets, parentheses inside of that. And we've got an operation. We're taking a number and we're cubing it. And then we're subtracting a number. Which should I do first? Subtract or cube? Grayson, cube. What's 3 times 3 times 3? No. 27. And that's a really common mistake, is to see this as this instead of that. Okay? All right, they're not the same. If they were the same, it would look like this. Right? They're not gonna, they wouldn't show it like that. Okay. All right. Oh, you were thinking like 3 squared. All right, so we should get 27 minus 8 here. And just because there's a lot going on there, we're going to stick mainly with that. Next thing up is what, Mr. Cooper? Okay, parentheses, so 27 minus 8. Okay, 19. We got 3 plus 9, parentheses 19. Mr. Sanchez? Nine times nineteen. Go ahead. One hundred seventy-one. Three plus one seventy-one. One seventy-four. So what I'm going to do? Granted, this is all in the video. It will be recorded, so you can go back and look at this and rewind it and make sure that you understand everything that happened inside that set of brackets. But I'm going to erase it now for sake of space. And we're going to put 174 in that bracket spot right there. Okay. Now we're going to come over. What's next? After we've taken care of that set of brackets on the right, Mr. Marquina, parentheses, 5 minus 8, which is negative 3. Okay. So I got negative 3. I got 3 times negative 3 plus 174. Mr. Babbitt. Three times negative three, which is negative nine plus one seventy four. One sixty five. Okay, those of you that did the review was one sixty five correct? Good. Okay. So on something like this, let's say on the test you saw the same question twice. I just put the same answer twice. One sixty five, one sixty five. All right. All right. Carnival has a duck pond booth. You choose a rubber duck at random. The mark on the bottom of the duck tells you whether you want a small, medium, or large prize, or no prize at all. All right. So there's four options, right? Small, medium, large, or none at all. There's 56 ducks floating in a pond. Four, doc, four ducks are marked large. 14 ducks are marked medium. 20 ducks are marked small. Uh, find the probability of winning a small prize at the duck pond. Express your answer as a percent. If necessary, round your answer to the nearest thousandth. All right, so that's three decimal places, right? Okay. So probability, okay? Find the probability. So what type of number goes on top? No, no, no. What type of number? Number what? Because if we understand what probability is, we'll have a better, easier time of getting these questions right. Mr. Cotto? What's that? Uh, 
no, 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 I understand where you're getting the number 20, but when we're talking about any probability, what type of number goes on top? Where did you, why did you put 20 there? Because what? It's the number of the thing desired. Okay, it's what we want. Okay, now what type of number goes on the bottom? <laughs> What's another word for all of them put together? Total. Number total. Okay, so what you're saying is that there are 20 small ducks, right? How many total ducks are there? 56. So what I'm doing with my calculators, I'm taking 20 divided by 56. 0 0.3571. Keep going. Okay, so we'll take it there. All right, now we want to make that number a decimal. Or sorry, not a decimal, a percent. Okay, what do I do? Multiply by 100. Or I can move the decimal place two places to the right. Right? Okay. So I should get 35 point, and it says to the thousandth, right? 711. 35.711%. Um, oh, is there just one one there? Okay. All I'm doing here is what you guys tell me. So we should get 35.714%. So let me fix this down there. Okay, does that work for you guys? Okay, we understand that. All right. Do we understand what probability is now? Okay, that should make your life easier. Okay. All right, simplify. We got 6x to the 4th plus 2 times 2x to the 4th minus 2b to the 5th. Some order of operations in here. Okay, Alex, what do you think first? Distribute the 2, right? Because I can't do anything inside that parentheses. Why can I not do anything inside that set of parentheses? They're not equal. Mm. They're not like terms. And they're not like terms because they have different variables. Okay, And even if they were the same variable, what if it was 2x to the 4th minus 2x to the 5th? Could I combine them? Because they don't have the same exponent. Okay, So like terms are terms that have the same variable to the same exponent. So we are distributing. So we have 6x to the 4th. What do I get whenever I distribute? Um, Maggie. Okay, what's that going to give me? Okay, 4x to the 4th. Okay. Well, okay. Um, no, it's not going to be 4b to the 5th. That's a negative 2. Negative 4b to the 5th. Here's what you need to understand that that is both a subtraction sign and a negative sign at the same time. The same way a plus sign is a positive at the same time. I knew that. That's why I was saying subtract first and then... Well, we can't subtract first. Oh, put the subtraction symbol in front. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. All right. That makes sense. All right. What's next? Grayson? Yeah, we're on the blue. So we're... Okay, what's 6x to the 4th plus 4x to the 4th? 10x to the 4th, right? Whenever I'm adding or subtracting like terms, I don't do anything to change their exponents, right? Okay, minus 4b to the 5th. Okay, as we've already established, 6x to the 4th and 4x to the 4th are like terms because they have the same variable that's taken to the same power. 10x to the 4th minus 4b to the 5th. All right, so we would get this answer right here, correct?
ready? Okay. Okay, solve. Negative 2f equals 8. So we want an answer that's going to say f equals. So we got negative 2f equals 8. One step, right? Uh, let's see, Maria, what do you do? Divide by negative 2 because we want to isolate f. Okay, what is 8 divided by negative 2? Negative four. Very good. Question? You, and you counted it wrong? Oh, did you put it, it? It's probably one of those things where the test counted it wrong, but I wouldn't have counted it wrong. Okay, that's probably the only difference. I could probably go through and look and see what the accepted answers are, but on test day, I'm going to go through and I'm going to allow any correct answers. So whenever we look at those results where, you know, we missed, you know, the highest score was a 12, that's probably not valid, okay? But I haven't gone through there because I was just getting results here this morning, okay? So that would very easily change your review score. All right, solve. Enter your answers as fractions using a division uh, sign as the fraction bar as needed. Do not use spaces. So she's telling you here, you know, how to put it in so that it shows out as a correct answer. Okay, so we have x plus 10 thirteenths equals 1 half. We want to solve for x. We want x equals. All right, in order to solve for a variable, we have to... Do what? Isolate. Isolate it. And in order to isolate it, we have to do the opposite operation, right? So what operation is happening there? Addition is happening. So the opposite is subtraction. So we need to subtract 10 thirteenths, right? Okay. And I think this is one that we talked about at the back of the room the other day, right? Okay. One half minus 10 thirteenths. All right, anytime I'm trying to either add or subtract fractions, what do I have to have? A common denominator. What is the common denominator here? 26. So how do I, what do I multiply 1 half by? 13 over 13, right? It's got to be in the numerator and denominator. And 10 thirteenths, 2 and 2, right? Okay. All right, what's 13 times 1? Okay, over 26 minus, okay, so we know we're going to get a denominator of 26, correct? Okay, what's 13 minus 20? Negative 7, 26. So the way we're going to type this is negative 7, fraction bar, 26. It might have had, did you have an x equals? Okay, you need to have the x equals because we're solving for x. So you need to have the variable equals. Okay, we're getting late enough in the year that I may not give you credit if we don't have that variable equals. Okay, so again, things where you're doing everything right, but if we don't input things incorrectly, we can very easily get it wrong. All right, number six. Is there a set of parentheses around that negative 7? Right? Because there's no parentheses around it, it's 7 squared times negative 1. Okay? Because there's no parentheses. Okay? So my bet is, is that a bunch of you got it wrong when it's actually negative 49. Right? Did you put in 49 and get it wrong? You put negative 49, okay? Because that's different than if we had negative 7 squared, right? What's negative, negative 7 squared? That's 49, but this is negative 49. So you put in negative 49 and got it right? Okay, good. All right, so just be, be aware of that. All right, number 7. Okay, now this is multiplication, 
So when we have multiplication, we're not dealing with like terms here, correct? We're talking about exponents. So what do I do whenever I'm multiplying bases that are the same, like an x and an x, or a y and a y, what do I do with their exponents? Go ahead. Add them. All right? So I've got an x squared and x to the 8th. All right? So I should get x to the what? 10th. I've got a y squared and a y to the 8th. I should get y to the 10th. So x to the 10th, y to the 10th. Okay? We're good there? Yeah. Excellent. What's that? Are you wait? Okay. All right. Write the phrase 15 less than z as an algebraic expression. 15 less than z. Let me tell you what a lot of people will do. They'll write 15 minus z. Is that correct? No. So it's it's negative z plus 15? No. What is it then? Good. z minus 15. Okay. We have z and we're subtracting 15 from it. You about put the alligator sign there? I mean, that that's a less than Oh, I see what you mean. Not I mean what you mean by alligator you met in reference to the less than. So you just about did. Okay. Was it, I mean, did you put, did you put Z minus 15 and it counted it as correct? That's what you want. Yeah, you do not want that. You did the less than sign. Yeah. Um. No, because we're not we're not solving for x. We just want the expression. Okay, so that's a good question. The question was, could you write z minus 15 equals x? We're not trying to get it to equal anything. Okay, we just usually what we have is that when it says an expression, there's no equal sign in an expression. Okay, once there's an equal sign, an expression becomes an equation. What you wrote was an equation. What we want is just an expression. Okay. All right, solve h plus 0 0.69 equals 36.72. What do we do here? Isolate the h by subtracting 0 0.69 from both sides, right? So I should get h equals probably 36.72. Okay, 36.72 minus 0 0.69 gives me 36.03. Okay, well, hopefully that's a really easy one to get right on the test. Okay, okay, yeah. Anytime you've got a variable that you're solving for, remember on the test you are writing x equals h equals z equals whatever, okay? If we're solving for a variable, we're writing that variable equals what it should equal. Okay, all right. Uh, back to order of operations. Let's make sure we're being respectful. All right, um, I'm hmm, got a couple of things that we can do here. Let's focus on this right here. Okay, what do we do first in that? Braden? Okay, so Okay, 6 plus 3 is 9, so I've got 11 minus 9. What's next? 2. All right, so we got 2 brackets, 2 plus 6 um, parentheses, 3 times the absolute value of negative 6. Why is this 7? I, it's probably just listed out of order. Go ahead. Right, I can go ahead and do the 2 times 2, which is 4 plus 6, but I can't, I have to finish before I do really anything else. Now, that's 3 times what? It's 3 times 6, right? 
so we should be getting 18 here. So make sure that you are understanding that the absolute value of negative 6 is 6, so whenever you go to multiply it, you're multiplying it by positive 6. Go ahead. That's fine. Yep. Dealing with parentheses first. All right, so now we need 4 plus 6 times 18, so what's first here? The multiplication, right? 6 times 18. What is that? 108. Okay, so we should get an answer of 112, correct? Okay. Okay, but we're going to show our work through there. Okay. Uh, 10. Ralph is an electrician. He charges an initial fee of $36 plus $35 per hour. If Ralph earns $176 on a job, how long did the job take? So you need to start off by writing an equation here. He charges $36 just for showing up. A lot of places do that. Okay, so there's just a standard $36 plus $35 per hour. Well, how do I represent $35 per hour? 35x or 35, let's do 35h. Okay, and that's going to equal what? 176. You're asking, does it matter which variable do we use? No, it doesn't matter. Okay. So how do I solve for the number of hours that he worked, Grayson? Right, we want to solve. What are we trying to solve for here? H. Right, we're, trying to, we're using H for hours so we know what we're solving. Okay, so help me solve for it. No, you're jumping too quick. We need to isolate H, but first, we, it's kind of like backwards order of operations. We deal with the addition and subtraction first. We deal with the multiplication and division. Okay. So do what? No, I can't add these two. They're not like terms. Subtract what? No, can't subtract H. They're not like terms. I cannot combine unlike terms. I need to isolate H, so I need to move everything else over here. How do I get rid of 36? Subtract it. Okay, so I've got 35H equals, what's 176 minus 36? Okay, 140. Okay, now what, Grayson? Bye. What, divide by 35 on both sides, okay? All right, what is 140 divided by 35? Four. So our answer is, how long did he work? We're not just going to write four. Okay, we have to write four hours. It requires a unit. Even though you got the right number, if you don't put a label on it, I'm going to let it be wrong. You could put H equals four hours. At least then I know, I mean, if you have four hours in there anywhere, I'm going to take it. Okay? But anytime we're dealing with units, we need to have those units in there. Okay. 15 yards to inches. And it's you got a lot listed here. Okay. Um, but if we're just trying to convert yards to inches... I don't need all of this. I really only need um, some of this stuff is more than what I need. Um, I really only need this. That's the only part of that I need. All the rest of that is misleading. Infer well, not misleading, but it's it will make you think that you need all of that. Okay. So how many inches are how many inches are in a yard? Three. Three, Three inches in a yard. Listen to what I'm saying. So there's three feet in a yard, okay? And there's 12 inches in a foot. So how many inches are in a yard? 36, right? Because 12 times 3, 12 inches in a foot, three feet in a yard, 36 inches is one yard. Okay, so how do I find out how many inches are in 15 yards? Multiply what? 15 times 36. 540 
inches. You, there's multiple different ways to do it. Okay, but did you still get 540? Yeah. You misspelled inches? That's why you got it wrong? Okay. I probably, like, if you misspell something, but I can tell what it's supposed to be, right, I'm going to give you credit. 540 inch? Okay. I probably wouldn't count that wrong. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Where do I start here? Uh, it's Chicago. Distribute, yes. Good. What am I distributing? 4 to x and 4 to the negative 2. Okay, so we've got x plus what? Well, we're not ready for that yet. Okay, we'll get there. What is 4 times x? 4x and 4 times negative 2? Negative 8. Okay, we got equals 12. And so you are going ahead and jumping to the 5x because you got x plus 4x. Okay, so we got 5x minus 8 equals 12. What do you do next? We're trying to solve for x, so we've got to isolate it. And this is the same problem that we were having earlier. All right, so when we're trying to isolate a variable, we do kind of the opposite of order of operations. Normally, we would start with multiplication, but because we're trying to undo it, right, we're going to start with the subtraction. How do I undo subtraction? No. Un what's the opposite of subtraction? Addition. If I have negative 8 of something and I add 8, right, that gets me to 0, which is why it cancels out on this side. Okay, negative 8 plus 8, now it's gone over here, but it keeps it balanced. Okay, so now I have 5x equals what? What's 12 plus 8? 20, good. Now what? This is, what is 5 and x doing? What's the operation there? Is it addition? Do we see an add sign? Is it subtraction? Is it division? Do we have a division sign in there? Okay, is it multiplication? Yes. Okay, what's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So we're going to divide by 5 on sides. What is 20 divided by 5? 4. So we want our answer to be x equals 4. But if you're struggling with this solving, and a couple of us are as sure about it, can I check my answer? Yeah, I can go in here and I can put 4 plus 4 times 4 minus 2. Okay, what's 4 minus 2? Two? 2. What's 4 times 2? What's 8 plus 4? 12. Okay, so now I know that I got the right answer. Does that make sense? So one of the smart things that you can do is actually on a lot of these, anytime where I'm solving for x or y or z or whatever it is, I can plug that solution back in and check if I got the right answer. That way I don't have to like, well, I hope I did well on that test. On a lot of these, I can check my answer and like, man, I know I got 100%. I checked all my answers. Okay. That's what we're checking up here. So... All right. Um, let's see. We only have we only have a few minutes here. How many questions we got? What? 13, 14, 15, 16, 8. Okay. Which one do you want to look at? How about 16 or or 15? How do I get the three to the other side? Multiply by three on both sides, and that's going to give you Q equals. Okay. All right, um, let's look at 16. What do I do first there? This one's probably maybe the toughest question on the test, I would say, by what we're struggling with. Add two-thirds. 
Okay. So, but, all right, so that gets rid of two-thirds there. But I've got one plus two-thirds. Um, that's technically one over one, right? If I want to go ahead and add those fractions together, I've got to get a common denominator. So I'd multiply one by one over three over three. That'd give me three-thirds, right? So two-thirds in equals what's three plus two? So that gives me five-thirds. Divide by two-thirds. Can I divide by a fraction? No, don't invert five-thirds. All right, so that would be multiplying by three-halves. Okay, so... Let's just be clear about this. The reason that that works is because 3 times 2 over 2 times 3 cancels out to be 1. Right? Okay, so that's why that works. So n equals, what's 5 times 3? And what's 3 times 2? So that gives me 15 sixths. Uh, both of those numbers are divisible by what? 3. What's five di 15 divided by 3? 5 halves. I would also, it uh, doesn't say how it wants it. That's, that's how I'm going to ask for it. N equals 5 divided by 2. Uh, what's that? What if you left it as 15 over 6? It doesn't say to reduce the fraction, but you should. I probably won't count it wrong if you have N equals 15 over 6. But it's always best to simplify your fractions. Okay? So I'll take either of those two answers. You said, will I take two and one half? Yeah, I'll take two and one half. But you have to show your work. I don't want to just get the impression that, oh, I just sat there with a the calculator. I took, you know, and I just punched in one plus parentheses two divided by three, close parentheses, and then I divided by two divided by three. You know what I mean? Like, I want to see the work. I want to see, because this is what we're trying to get you to be able to do, is to be able to add fractions and multiply and divide fractions. Okay? What other question? We got time for maybe one more. 20? 20, I think, is a lot easier than what you guys are giving it credit for. It says, give the domain and range of the relation and determine whether the relation is a function. Support your answer. Use, okay, so using complete sentences, this is the tough part. All right, so this is not a function. Okay, it's not a function because, all right, so I'm not writing this out for you, but you need to listen to this really closely. Okay, this is not a function because there is more than one output per input. Notice that zero shows up three times and has a different output answer or a different y answer each time. So whenever I go to graph it, right, I would see points on a graph that looked like this. If I had 0, negative 5, that's down here. 0, negative 1 is down here. 0, 1 is here. It doesn't pass the vertical line test. Okay, does that make sense? So there's a lot of different things that you could say there. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so tell me how you graphed it then. All right. You need to say more than it doesn't pass the vertical line test because at this point, if I'm looking at this and you're telling me it doesn't pass the vertical line test, well, how do you know it doesn't pass the vertical line test? Did you, I mean, tell me that you graphed 0, negative 5, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, and it created a vertical line of points on the y-axis, and therefore it does not pass the vertical line test, therefore it is not a function. Does that make more sense? Okay. When you write your sentences on these last questions, you should be writing them as if you're explaining them to somebody that doesn't know math. Okay? Number 19, um, take negative 2.48 and add 2.8 to it. You're just adding 2.8 to both sides. So you should get like negative 22. No, it should just be negative 22. Okay. All right, we're going to close that down right there. Do you have another?